Hi, my name is Monica Sider. I am a Senior Public Affairs Representative with the Water Replenishment District, or better known as WRD. Uh, before we get into our lesson um, with Mo Peter and Moises, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about who WRD is and what we do. WRD was formed by a vote of the people in 1959 to protect the groundwater resources of the Central and West Coast groundwater basins. WRD is the largest groundwater agency in the state of California managing and protecting local groundwater resources in 43 cities and providing water for a little over 4 million residents. WRD works with other water agencies such as West Basin to protect the aquifers along the West Coast Basin from seawater intrusion. What that means is that we inject water along the coastline through injection wells to stop the seawater from entering our clean water supply. WRD also monitors the water levels to ensure that there is enough water for its residents. Today, we will be learning how WRD hydro hydrogeologists Peter and Moises take water samples from one of the hundreds of wells WRD monitors. These water samples make sure that the quality of the water is clean for the population to drink, so that when you open your faucet to either cook, wash your face, brush your teeth, take a shower, um, give water to your pets, uh, we want to make sure that that water is clean for you to use. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what is groundwater? Groundwater is water that is found underground between sediments, such as rocks and gravel. And as the water seeps into the ground, it might find its way into an aquifer. So come on, follow me, and I'll go ahead and give you an example of what that looks like. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what is an aquifer? An aquifer is a collection of wet underground rocks that allow water to pass through it slowly. A well can be used to pump water from an aquifer so that people can use the water for drinking, watering, crops, and other purposes. Here's an example of what an aquifer looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and pour water into this jar of sediments of rocks, big and little rocks. And the spaces between those rocks, the empty spaces are now filled with water. That is an aquifer. And when I refer to, we use um, wells to pump water out, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with this soap dispenser. I'm gonna go ahead and put the soap dispenser in the jar, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pump water. And what makes it easy is the spaces between the rocks, which is an aquifer for us to be able to pump water out. Now to the fun portion of our lesson. You will now get to listen to Peter and Moises, two of WRD's hydrogeologists, on how they ensure our water is clean for us to use. Take it away, Moises and Peter. Hey, good morning. My name is Peter. I'm with the Water Replenishment District. I'm a hydrogeologist. Hello, my name is Moises, and I'm also a hydrogeologist at WRD. So today we're going to be uh, sampling a well, um, one of our wells in the uh, network. Um, this is what we do usually, uh, test the water quality and uh, water levels. And what we do is we use that water level and water quality data to do scientific interpretations that give us a better insight onto how the water conditions are in our basin, uh, not just at this location, but at the rest of the network. So we have a good idea of what's going on regionally. So as mentioned, we're going to collect a groundwater sample today. So this is one of our monitoring well locations. We have just over 60, just like it, throughout Southern Los Angeles County. And this vault encloses uh, several of our monitoring wells. So we're gonna open it up and check it out. So this is one of our monitoring well sites. It's a nested well site because there are uh, more than one monitoring wells within the well borehole. And each of these wells monitors a separate aquifer at various depths, ranging from deepest to shallowest. So in order to collect the groundwater sample, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump water out of one of these wells. I can't pump enough, I can't pump the water unless I know how much I gotta pump out. So the first step is to determine where the water level is in the well that we're going to sample. And in order to do that, we use a water level meter to collect the depth of the water in that particular well. So Peter will go ahead and measure a water level for us so that we know where we're at. All right, so really quick, the way this water level meter works is when it, uh, it has this probe at the end, when it touches the water in a well, it makes a sound like this. And then we can read off the, the tape, which is kind of like a measuring tape. Um, and it's in reference to this level. So that the top of this vault has been um, GPSed and we know the, the actual elevation of this um, well right here. So we can uh, figure out the groundwater elevation after that. So right now we'll take a water level reading by uh, placing the, the probe inside the well and going down 
until I hear a, uh, a beeping sound and that's when I know that I have, have hit the water in the well. So there we go, we got the water level. And I'm gonna place the tape against the side of the um, level. When I hit, when I hear the beep, that's when I know where the water level is. So I will, at the beep, is where we read the water level reading. So this one looks like it's gonna be 109.83. So Moises will uh, record that on his uh, on a water level form. So I'll note this uh, depth to water reading that Peter just measured, and I'll use that to calculate how much volume I have to pump out. So this is what our day logger looks like. It's basically a pressure transducer, and it uh, records the changes in water levels as uh, water levels fluctuate in the current water. So now that we have our depth to water and we've pulled our data logger, we're ready to put our pump into the well. So what we're going to do is use a hydraulic skid to lower our electric submersible pump and that pump is going to help us pump the water out. So I'll go ahead and get that going. we're pumping the water it's important for us to know the quality of the water that we're pumping and that's where this device comes in this is a multi-parameter water quality meter and this is equipped with several sensors you can see them there and that'll log stuff like temperature of the water the pH how turbid it is the oxygen levels so that gives us a good idea of the quality of the water but also when that quality has sort of stabilized which is you'd expect that towards the end of the pumping cycle so I'll go ahead and get this ready. And we're gonna route the water that we're pumping through a flow-through cell. I'm sorry, what? A flow-through cell. Flow-through cell. So this is just a, these are just a couple tools that we use to guide the water so that this probe can start taking its measurements. So this device, it's a couple of tools that uh, we put together and it's a flow through cell. So the water that we pump out, we guide it through these pipes and into this flow cell cup of a known volume. And so what we'll do is we'll stick this water quality meter into this cup and that way once the water goes through, this can start recording the quality of the water. Peter's already hooked up a couple of hoses here. One hose goes in, one hose comes out, and the other end of the hose will connect to the pump discharge there. So now the water that pumps through this hose will route through this hose and enter our flow through some. Uh, so next, in order to power the pump, uh, we're gonna use a uh, variable frequency drive control box. Uh, what this does is we can uh, control the different the flow rate uh, when we're pumping the, the water from the well. So right now Moises will uh, hook it up to our, to our custom build uh, generator on this truck. And then next you'll uh, connect it to the, directly to the pump to uh, give it a power. So on this flow cell right here, you have the markings and it tells you how many gallons per minute. Uh, so right now you can start seeing the bubbles coming through. So one, this is one gallon per minute, two, three. Um, and basically we actually try to max it out. We try to go as, uh, almost as uh, fast 
as possible with this Pikachu type. So I think we'll probably get around four or five gallons per minute. So we have the water pumping now and you can see it's about uh, 4.8 gallons per minute. That, that is the current pumping rate for this well. And that's probably the fastest we can go uh, right now. So just to summarize, we collected a depth of water with our water level meter that told us how much water is in the monitoring well casing. Then we dropped the pump into the well. We hooked up the pump discharge to our flow through cell, which allows us to take water quality readings. The water gets discharged out into the spreading grounds here. And we're gonna typically, we pump the wells uh, for about three volumes worth of what's in the casing. And during that period, uh, what we call a groundwater purging period, we'll collect the various water quality readings. Once we've seen that they've stabilized, they would be ready to collect a groundwater sample. Well, Peter figures out uh, how long our purging period is going to be, I'm gonna start looking at the water quality of the water that we're pumping out. And so the way we do that, we communicate to this water quality meter via this Bluetooth device and an application on a mobile phone. So I'll just sync them together. And this does take about a minute or so. All right, so now I'm connected to our device. And all I gotta do is click on live readings. And I'm able to see various water quality parameters listed there in real time. And this refreshes every two seconds. So I'm basically, I know what the water quality of the well is at any point in time that I choose to connect to the water quality device via the Bluetooth. So I can see that our specific conductivity is just under 450, a micro Siemens per centimeter. We have a pH of about 7.6. I see the temperature of the water is around 67 degrees. And the oxygen level is at about 0.27 milligrams per liter or parts per million. So we'll do this throughout the purging process so that we can get an idea, make sure that the water is consistent, that we don't see any anomalous values uh, based on our historical uh, known facts for the water as well. Okay, so I, based on the 4.8 gallon per minute purge rate uh, in three volumes, that will take about 98 minutes to pump out three volumes and uh, the, the well be re will be ready to sample. So we start at about 10.06, and if you add 98 minutes, we'll be ready at 11.44. So that is our uh, sample collection time. And throughout the purging period, I will make note of the parameters that, that Moises just uh, mentioned, like the conductivity, pH, temperature, etc. We'll take about uh, three to four readings while this well is purging, and we are uh, preparing for sampling. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for, for our day here. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm a hydrogeologist. Uh, this is a really, if you like working outdoors uh, with water and uh, I don't love the environment, you know, I want to uh, keep the water, our water sources clean. Um, I invite you to look forward, uh, look into getting a, a job in the water, in the water industry. Thanks for stopping by.